Great, thank you. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the May 26th special meeting of the, Glo of the Gloucester City Council. Um, this meeting is a one item agenda. And um, in the interest of government transparency consistent with chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, with regards to deliberations and decisions made by the city council and according to open meeting law, since the meeting was posted as a Zoom meeting, this meeting is recorded by video and audio and will be conducted by remote participation. Additionally, all votes taken by the city council during this and future remote meetings will be by roll call vote. If you're calling in on a phone, you can press star nine to request to speak. If you're watching on a computer or device, there's a raised hand button that you can tap or press to request to speak. Please use either of these options during oral communication to be recognized to speak. Um, I just want to take the attendance right now. We've got um, Tony Gross, um, Tracy O'Neill, Jeff Worthley, Sean Nolan um, is calling in, and Scott Memard. So we have a quorum of the full city council, which is great. And Joanne Sinos is our city clerk. Thank you, Joanne, for being here. So um, today we have um, one item, and um, so I'll ask you, Joanne, to um, for the first order of business. I will continue the meeting. Um, the City Council to weigh in on the Massachusetts Municipal Association's recommendations on proposed Senate bills for the fiscal 23 state budget. So um, let me just tee this up for a moment. What I'm asking here is that this, so would everyone mind muting themselves if we're not, um, Thank you. So <clears throat> what, we're, what I'm asking the city council to consider tonight in this special meeting is for us to be able to weigh in on the MMA recommendations and the proposed Senate bill amendments for the fiscal 23 state budget, as well as key appropriations. And I did want you to know that Senator Tarr reached out to me late morning and he let me know that their votes would most likely occur before the end of the day today However, um, then these go to the House and Senate to conference committee to be reconciled and irreconciled. So we felt that it was still helpful for us to go through this. And what I can do at the end of this meeting is I can actually just be in touch with him and just say our city council supported these amendments as follows. So, um, so that's what the process is right now. Um, we did have a couple of late submittals to things like the Division of Local Services and proposed bills and an independent bill submitted to us this morning by um, Val Nelson. Um, and, um, and this was on coastal resilience. It's a bill that Senator Tarr is, is um, supporting in um, Greg Verga and I would suggest because this wasn't on the agenda, what we can do is if as individual counselors, if that's something that you would like to support, you're free to send in a, an email of support referencing that bill, um, but just make sure you state that you are an individual member of the city council. Um, so what I'd like to do right now um, is just screenshot, ask, ask Joanne to screenshot for us. And um, so I can just kind of highlight what this is. There's one attendee right now, and that is Val Nelson. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a letter that we got um, late last week. And actually I didn't get it until late Monday afternoon. So Joanne, if you could just scroll up. I wanted to just show you counselors. I think you've, has anyone here on the call not read these bills? Okay, so it sounds like we have. So Joanne, would you just um, scroll up 
so we can um, kind of follow this along. All right, there were some key bills on this, a key, a key municipal op operational amendments to the fiscal budget that really captured me and I think have also captured other counselors. And if you would just look down, um, this is from MMA, and MMA represents all 379, I think it is, towns and cities in Massachusetts. And they've gone through all these with a fine tooth comb, and they are making these recommendations. And so I was hoping that we could just review these, and if we like them, we can vote to support them. Um, some of them are, are very, um, don't really affect us that much, but um, the first one is Amendment 647, which is a regional school transportation, 100% reimbursement, and that's being supported. It doesn't really affect us. Uh, um, if I, it just, well, it does because of our, um, our membership of the regional school. Okay. So um, why don't we go through each of them and then we can, um, we can discuss them. So um, can you scroll up, Joanne, so we can see that? Great. So um, Tony, would you mind, would you read that one for us? Amendment 647? All right. Amendment 647, regional school transportation, 100% reimbursement. Please support an increase in the regional school transportation account um, which is critical to rural and smaller communities. Amendment 647 filed by Senator Gobi would fund 100% of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education's fiscal 2023 projected claims of $97 million. So okay. yeah, that, would, that would affect us um, in our overall um, a, assessment from the regional school because it would pay you know, they'd be reimbursed on transportation. So that would lower okay. operating. And, and that sounds like a, a good bill. Um, the next one is, thank you, Tony. And the next one is remote meeting extensions. If you could just scroll up. Um, so this I think is extraordinarily important to all of us and timely. Um, so what, they're asking us to support Amendment 1114 filed by Senator Brownsberger to extend provisions allowing for remote participation to open public meetings, as well as remote notarization, Joanne, and remote town meetings, among others, from July 15th, 2022 to December 15th, 2023. Massachusetts is in the middle of another rise in COVID transmissions and extending the option for remote meetings will provide resili re resiliency for government operations during a time of ongoing uncertainty and public health concern. This is a highly time sensitive measure and it makes perfect sense to include it in legislation that will get to the governor's desk before the current extension expires on July 15th. And, um, Joanne, um, your hands raised, go ahead. Yeah, you said about notaries, that would not apply to us. Okay, and why is that? I believe in the bill, it only applies to attorneys in uh, law offices. Got it. Or, uh, remote um, notarization. Okay. So it didn't apply to us, we, we couldn't do it. So. Okay. We are muted, Bell. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so based on our first live meeting last week, we were wondering what the, pro what the process was to this. And this is our opportunity to, to say that we support this. Um, would you scroll up, Joanne? And we have a second attendee right now. We have Bob Myers, who's a Ward 4 constituent. Can, can I? Can I ask a question? Or yes, Tracy, please do. Uh, Thank you. Oh, when I first read this, I thought it meant this December. So this is like a year and a half of remote participation. They're just, exactly. They're just putting that out there because I think they want to um, make it as easy as possible for municipalities to do what they each feel they're comfortable with based on COVID and technology, et cetera, and also on the will of the committee. You know, and I think, I think that that's a positive one. Um, does anybody have any comments on that one? 
the, the longer time frame is certainly very helpful in terms of planning and anticipating costs related as we have been to yeah, uh, hybrid, hybrid or other alternatives. Okay. Absolutely. Sense. And then the next one is, um, yeah. go ahead, anyone else raising their hand? I can't see you, um, so just speak out. This is an informal meeting, go ahead. I just wanna make sure we understand that if this does get extended, if the council decides and we have the ability to go in person or hybrid, we can still do that. Does, this doesn't prohibit that. It just gives us the additional time to figure it out if we, if we want to need that, correct? That is correct. Okay, good. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Yeah, good clarification. All right. Anyone else have anything to say about um, Amendment 1114? Okay, the next one. Um, Tony, do you want to? Do you want to read that one? Because I know you've been looking over these closely. All right, so this was Amendment 743, Rural School Aid, and Amendment 704, Regionalization Grant Program. Um, Amendment 743 was filed by Senator Hines to fund the Royal Rural School Aid account um, at 20 million and providing um, rural school assistant grants with priority given to proposals that support schools and districts that have experienced significant enrollment losses. And Amendment 704 filed by Senator Gobi, which provides 500,000 for school district regionalization grants to regional school districts or school districts considering um, forming a regional school district or regionalization services. Now, this could be important to us. Five hundred thousand dollars goes is very thin for the entire state, but it could be important to us because a while ago, I think I was still on the school committee when we approached Rockport to discuss about you know shared programs and things. So I think it sort of has stalled on the Rockport side, um, is what I heard last, but I haven't followed up on it recently. Um, but. Yeah, this is uh, some grant money that we may be able to actually uh, tap into also if if we have a need for it. Okay, thank you. Any questions on that? Go ahead, Council O'Neill. Yeah, um, I'm not I'm not understanding quite what regionalization is. Who would are we regionalized currently? And if not, who would we regionalize with? I mean, would Glossa and Rockport um, comprise a region, or well, would we have to be a like a region of Boston or? No, 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 no. But Hamilton Wenham is a regional school. Manchester okay. Essex is a regional school. Okay. So there was, there was um, uh, funding uh, that was made available to the tune of, I think, $50,000 $50, for a study to be done about shared services with shared programs, not services, shared programs with Rockport. But I think it is it is stalled, and I think it was the Rockport side that really, um, you know, because they had to kind of, you know, they had, it takes two sides to talk, and, right? Uh, and so, but you know, with their their really dramatic falling enrollment, um, they may be asked at some point by the state to regionalize, and um, I don't think uh, Manchester Essex could could accommodate them, so. <laughs> All right. So this, this if may, this just, I'm just saying there's a possibility yeah. this may come in handy. Right. And if we don't regionalize with Rockport, we probably won't get anything. Right. And it's only 500,000. Okay. So okay. It's, it's not like Got there's it. a, yeah. lot of, uh, it's exactly. not a big lot of money. All right. right. Thank you. Thank you. These are good questions. The next one really resonated with me. Um, that's Amendment 127. And I'm going to ask Joanne to um, reflect a little bit on this. This is early voting reimbursement. And um, the request is to please support an appropriation to reimburse municipalities for the cost of implementing early voting for state elections. Amendment 127 filed by Senator Feingold includes a $6 million appropriation to fund the state mandate. And just looking at the amount of work that early voting um, takes out of the clerk's office, uh, Joanne, do you want to just elaborate on, on this one? Because I know you and I have been waiting for this to, to come forward, and uh, it's, it's wonderful to see. But could you, in a minute, just kind of describe why this is important to the clerk's office? Could you unmute yourself, please? 
Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, because when this was first implemented, um, we didn't have any reimbursement. So the city had to um, front every, the cost of it, the cost of overtime for staff, the cost of um, mailing the ballots and any other um, costs associated with the early voting. So the state did come back um, and reimbursed not 100%, but a percentage of the mailing costs for early voting in person. Then after we did, um, I think there was a special bill for the first time early voting. We did get reimbursed for just overtime for staff, but not any other at the time, like the city clerk staff, city clerk and assistant city clerk do not get reimbursed for their time in working for early voting. It's just the unions and on that. And anything else that we had to provide like drop boxes, um, getting the poll workers, okay, they would only um, reimburse for a percentage of the hours for early voting. So this is another one of those unfunded mandates that is probably going to come up. So I would ask that you fully, you know, endorse this so yes. that um, I don't know if they're going to reimburse 100 percent, but um, even if they do 80 percent and the municipalities have to pick up the rest of the costs, um, it would, you know, help the right. The city on that because right now for poll workers, um, even though it's a 13 hour day, we only get reimbursed for a regular election, not even early voting. Regular election, like two hours for like from um, seven to nine, and then after from um, seven, um, six to eight, and we get re just reimbursed for those poll worker hours. But during the day, the rest of the hours, uh, the city picks up the tab. Great, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, any other comments on that one before we move on? Okay, could you scroll this one up? Tony, would you mind going through this one? This is uh, a school committee one. All right, amendment um, 630 and 631, chapter 70, minimal aid. Um, so the Senate House Ways and Means is proposing to double the per pupil minimum aid of $60 per student. Um, to recognize that 135 districts that are um, at minimal aid, which I don't know if we are, um, uh, it's we've always the MMA has consistently advocated for $100 per student minimum aid, but to go from <laughs> um, from 60 to seven, uh, Senator Tarr filed uh, Amendment 631 and 630 which would increase chapter minimum, chapter 70 minimum aid to $75 per pupil and $100 per pupil respectively. So between those two amendments, he's gone from 75 to $100 per, per pupil. And that's in the chapter 70 money where we saw a, I think a 48% increase in chapter 70, um, something like that. So that we've already, we've seen quite a bit of this already. Um, That's what we reviewed last night in the budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which made up a big in the, portion in the cherry of, sheet. Of, yeah, so on the Cherry Street. So, so this, is, this is definitely a good thing um, that, that will help out. Um, but where it's only 135 districts, uh, I think that we may be already at, you know, there's a minimum spending level and Gloucester spends a little bit over that minimum amount that the state requires for us to spend as a community. Yeah. So I don't know if this, how much of effect this has on us, but I know the chapter 70 um, has, has done us well this time around. Okay, sounds good. This, this won't, this, this definitely won't, you know, our Senator put it in. So um, he's looking out for our, our, uh, our good. I, 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 this chapter 70 on the minimum aid is, has been somewhat of a, a bugaboo for me over the course of the years. So I should have um, done more research on it if I had known I'd give a report about it, but sorry. No, I, and I did have um, 
School Committee Chair Clancy review these with me this morning and she she felt comfortable with all the ones that were regarding um, the schools on this as a as a total um, yeah um, amendment so okay so the next one is amendment 663 this is an MSBA commission um, they're please supporting um, please support amendment 663 filed by Senator Feingold which would create a special commission to study the mass school building authority the commission will review and make recommendations concerning reimbursement rates for construction, as well as other areas of concern in order to maximize the important resources for cities and towns. And um, MMA is, is recommending that, and it seems to me to be good fiduciary um, evaluation to, to go through this. Does anyone here not agree with that, or does anyone want to comment on that? Okay, um, Joanne, can you unmute yourself? Joanne, I can't, you're muted. Can you, can you unmute yourself? Hmm. Joanne, you're muted. Madam Clark, you are muted. Joanne, can you hear us? Sorry, I just want to uh, inform you that Councilor O'Hara has joined the meeting. Oh, great. Thank Sorry you. Welcome, Welcome, Jamie. Welcome, Jamie. And, and um, just to let you know that um, Councilor Nolan is not on the screen, but he's following along closely and he's got all the documents in front of, of him. Um, so thank you. All right, so the next um, the next one here um, is Amendment 332, Local Opt-in for Permanent Outdoor Dining. Please support this amendment to give municipalities the option to permanently extend outdoor dining options. It's filed by Senator Tarr. Amendment 332 would allow restaurants to apply for local approval to expand outdoor table service. Um, just to let you know, I did speak to Greg Katamaturi about this um, earlier this week, and he said that this really doesn't affect what our current order is on the table, um, but this is just giving more flexibility for municipalities who might want to continue to advocate for outdoor dining, particularly now that the COVID rates are um, seem to be going up again, so it's not a bad thing to have. And then next is the cybersecurity. Does anyone have any questions on that one? I know we're kind of going fast, but we have a, an important budget meeting tonight. And um, any comments on the local opt-in for permanent dining? Seeing none, um, Joanne, if we could just scroll down, that would be great. All right, this is a cybersecurity commission. It's amendment um, 803. Please support Amendment 803 filed by Senator Moore establishing a cybersecurity review commission. Municipalities remain vulnerable to cyber attacks and are seeking the guidance and best practices advice that would result from this commission, including a municipal representative would add a local perspective to the state's interagency deliberation. Um, if someone is is um, needs to be muted, that would be great because I'm getting some interference. Um, any questions on that? Um, this next one, I, I think uh, I think we will end up hearing from Scott Memard, I bet. But um, Amendment 834, Community Preservation Act surplus funding. Please support Amendment 834 filed by Senator Comerford which directs a comptroller to transfer $20, 20 million to the Mass Community Preservation Trust Fund prior to sending the net surplus for fiscal 2022 to the Commonwealth Stabilization Fund. The number of CPA communities has reached 187, of which we are one, and this amendment would increase the state's match from approximately 35% to 43% 
about the same state match percentage as last year. Um, any comments about that or any questions about that? It's just become more important as more communities, especially bigger communities, have jumped on board to take advantage of the Community Preservation Act locally. Uh, we're, we're currently at a 1% assessment. Uh, Rockport's at a 3% assessment, so they get much more funding. But this year was a good example of uh, an increase in the funding that was made available to us. It's just that formula has gotten tighter and tighter from when they launched the program due to the number of municipalities that are now divvying up the pie and participating. So this is this would be a very helpful step. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on that? Here, yeah, Tracy. Go ahead, Tracy. Yeah, I I have to apologize. I'm I'm I have trouble with the verbiage on this. I, I just, it's just me. Um, it says it would increase the state's match from 35 to 43 percent, and then it says about the same ma same state match as last year. So how can it be the same as last year if it increased from last year was a 40? dramatic increase, but it, on, on a one-time basis? It fluctuates every year. 17 to 20 percent. I'm sorry. What? Typically, our 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 share, our our, our, our uh, contribution from the state has been limit. It's gone down, and it's been around 15, 17 to twenty percent. This past year was a wonderful exception to that, and we were much higher. And this would try. This would be an effort to make more funds available so that we would continue to get a the higher rate. But it varies every year. Okay, so it went up about eight percent. Is that is that? So is this, I just want to understand the writing. Well, we're hoping to keep it at 43%. And that's what it was for last year. And this is just the state's contribution towards matching our own. Oh, okay. This is All right. our local vote. It's the okay. state's match to what we assess our citizens. So we still take 1%, that's it. But then the state gives us back this extra money to surplus that. When, no, when, I, I understand. I understand the philosophy or whatever. Yeah. But it just says it it, it went up from thirty five to forty three percent. So it went up eight percent, right? I, I think Thir possibly the governor's budget had thirty five percent in it, and this amendment raises that initial oh. percentage from the governor to forty three percent. Right, and then it says it's about the same as last year. So that's what's Correct. confusing. Right. So I. I, I would agree with what Tony is saying. Um, so, so most likely the initial budget was 35% in the Senate. They're recommending that we bring it up to 43%, which is consistent with what it was last year. Okay. Thank Rather you. than decreasing it from last year to 35%. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, that's a, that's a great um, question. Um, so amendment 856, uh, flexibility in municipal broad, broadband spending. Please support amendment 856 filed with Senator Hins, which would allow funds appropriated for closing the digital divide to be granted to municipalities seeking relief from debt incurred for the construction of broadband networks. These communities were forced to step in when private carriers ignored their regions and left their households and businesses behind in the broadband build out, adding costly burdens on local taxpayers. I don't um, think that is, I, I think we're pretty much covered 100%, aren't we? Um, With Comcast? I believe we are. But. Does anyone else know? I mean, I don't know how that, how it would hurt. Um, no, be a right. good thing. Right. So amendments 942 and 951 Shannon grants. Um, please support amendment 942 and amendment 951 filed by Senator um, D. Domenico and Senator Edwards respectfully to increase funding for Shannon grant program. The anti-gang grant program helps cities and towns respond to and suppress gang-related activities. And then the final one is um, probably one that um, would have the greatest impact on municipalities. 
and that is um, that MMA has strong concerns regarding Amendment 810 relative to retiree cost of living adjustments or COLAs. The amendment, the amendment would authorize local and regional pension boards to award a COLA adjustment of up to 5.9% to retirees in fiscal 2023 above the current 3% cap. This would very likely increase a local unfunded pension liability and drive up the cost for taxpayers. Most communities in the state participate in regional pension systems and do not have direct decision-making authority regarding adoption of a higher COLA. And we are aware of no system that has incorporated higher COLAs into their unfunded pension liability calculations. Adoption of a higher COLA, even if limited to one year, would permanently increase the pension obligations for all participating communities, require, requiring increased annual appropriations to fund the cost. We recommend that you reach out to your chief municipal officials to determine what the financial impact would be in the cities and towns in your district. It is likely to be significant. Um, so those are those are the amendments. And um, does anyone have any questions on any of these before we get rid of the screenshot? Um, Council O'Neill. Yeah, sorry. Um... So this is increasing fight, um, increasing the COLA for retired city workers or state workers? Anyone that is under our pension. Okay. So city. that would increase, huh? City, not okay. teachers, not the teachers. They're under their own plan, retirement plan, but all the right. other city employees. All right. right. So when they've retired and they're... There's a 3% cap and this would raise it to almost double it, right? Correct. To give them, so that's like, that's that's a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's, it, and it's a lot all of a sudden that's being proposed. So MMA is saying that they don't think that that's a good idea. They think right. that that would be a concern because all of a sudden um, we would not be, we'd have to right. go through a whole budget again and, um, take a look at how that would affect us if in fact um, our pension board decided to bring that up to the maximum. Is that, Tony, that's correct, right? What I just said? That's, yeah, I think that that's exactly correct. Um, okay. And I think Kenny weighed in on this too. That this is probably not a good idea for us at this time. No. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, okay, good. Or, or at any time. So, so, so like I said, Exactly. So about five of these really just caught my eye when I was going through it. And I'm like, not knowing how far along the Senate would be and deliberating this week on these bills, I thought it would be beneficial for us to, to weigh in on it. And, um, and I, I know that Senator Tarr said they're probably going to have this done by tonight. And if we decide as a council that we want to um, support these recommendations, as summarized in this um, bill, in this recommendation from MMA, then I will just pick up the phone and call him and tell him that our council has um, reviewed this and we support MMA's recommendations. So um, does someone wanna make a motion on this and we can, and we can discuss it or... Um, um, Joanne, you're muted. Do you, are you going to have public input? Because Robert Myers is has his hand up. I, I was not going to just because it's not a public hearing and it wasn't advertised as a public yeah, hearing. Yeah. Okay, I just want you be you be aware of it yeah. so that he knows. Yeah, Bob, I'll call you after the meeting so we can talk about it, but we have to be consistent, but okay. thank you. Go I'd ahead. like to talk on that last one, the COLA also. Okay. Um, it's interesting that it doesn't have um, an, um, a sponsor, uh, somebody, you know, that wasn't filed by someone. And also, this is going to have, I'm sure there's a heavy lobbying push by the, um, the unions to, to have this move forward. So there's probably some pressure for this. So if we can make sure that this one gets a little highlighted, um, that would be a good thing. Uh, so that's all. I just wanted to make people aware that that 
that there is going to be that pressure from behind. And I find it interesting that it doesn't have a sponsor on there. Mm. Okay, thank you. Council Worthley. Thank you. Uh, first, thank you, Council Gross. I think you apologize for not doing a, a, a thorough presentation on one of the school ones. I thought it was fantastic. Thank you. Um, so, and Tracy raises the right point here. 5% is a lot. It's also the next year's coal increase is compounded. So right. this year we're spending $11 million to help fund our pension program. That number is going to continue to go up in 2034. That's 25 million on a regular budget. You add 5% to that, it just becomes a, a challenge that I don't think we want to, um, we can't take on. I don't think we can afford to do that. So um, can we separate these out and do it sort of like a consent agenda on the first four or five and then separate the COLA one out? Because that's the sense I'm getting is support for the majority of them and not support for one potentially. Well, well their recommendation, Council Worthley, is not to support that. They're, they're, so MMA is not supporting that. So if we if we just if if we just state this as we're supporting the recommendation of this May 18th document, then we will be doing just what you said. Yeah, except theirs doesn't say we're against it. Right. Strong concerns. Right. Well, yeah. So I'll take your recommendation. If you think that this is worded well enough to say keep it all together, then great. But strong. Oh, you're frozen. Council Worthy, you're frozen. Um, yeah, it doesn't. You're right. Yeah, I would like to agree. I would tend to agree with Councilor Worthley because, you know, you know, in, in every single one of these, they say, please support, please support. And this one doesn't say, please do not support, you know? So if, if, if there's a way to say, you know, we call that one out. We, you know, we, like agree, a, we agree with the MMA's recommendation to not, not, not support this particular one. Right. Okay, so why don't we um, add the that? Interesting, the interesting thing is, is based on the uh, the numbers here of all the proposed amendments, you know, the MMA has gone through this with a fair, fairly fine tooth comb because there are a whole lot of numbers that are missing in the sequence here. So there are a lot of proposed amendments that have been made by various members of the Senate, state Senate that are not being recommended or endorsed for our behalf by the MMA. Right, and um, it was it was um, nice for me to hear. I was talking to uh, Mayor Verga about some of the things that they discussed at the mayor's meeting last week, and um, a lot of these bills were part of their conversation. So he was happy that we were going to be having this conversation um, because there's a, there's a lot of passion behind behind some of these bills, and they're very important to us in Gloucester. Um, so, um, Tony, do you want to do you want to take a stab, Councilor Gross, at making a, a, a motion and um, of of what we want to support and um, and 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 then stating the last one as we decided would be helpful, and that would be Amendment Eight Ten. Um, um. Well, well let, let's put it this way. Should we should we take any of these off of this? Um, does anyone want to to take one of these off and not consider? Does anyone have a problem with any of these? Okay, seeing none. Uh, I think I can do it, um, including okay. including the last one. Okay. Um, I move that we support the Mass Municipal Association's letter of um, May 18th uh, regarding the amendments enclosed therein and would, and on the last amendment regarding uh, um, Amendment 810, we strongly oppose any increase in the COLA adjustments. Second it. Perfect. Good did job for not having a template, Councilor Gross. Did, did we get that, Joanne? We'll have to take it off the Zoom. <laughs> and quick question. 
All right, so um, so we're in the discussion now, and um, Council Worthley has a question. Go ahead, let's discuss this. A motion by Council Gross, and it was seconded by Council Memard, correct? Yes. Go ahead, Council Worthley. So I support exactly what Tony um, articulated very well. Thank you. I would like to, I know that this is a public hearing, but could we ask a question of an attendee to potentially just at least get the bill number and so that if we are going to send individual letters it's in our email we have an email from from Valerie came here to support today we, it's, in, it's in our we have it in our email i'm sorry i don't have that in front of me thank you yeah and we and we discussed that at the beginning and and we are encouraging counselors um who might want to support what she sent to us to go ahead and um and and support yeah, and I, I know personally I will be doing that as an individual counselor and I will get that done by the end of the day today to support it. And we can do that as long as we say that we're individually doing that because this was not specifically on our agenda. We didn't get the material in advance, but I, I think seeing that it's my personal opinion, well, I won't I won't do that. That's not fair. So we can we can we can individually decide if we want to support um the document that um that bell nelson sent to us so what i was asking for is just the bill number i know it's in our email i just saw it. it's bill number 54. And yep that Composed, yeah, exactly um do you want to read the paragraph council worthy we have a motion on the table i just want to make sure we make time for this so can we do this can we discuss this after just to get all the councils who may want to support it the information that they need since okay that's fair. So let's let's continue this discussion on the motion. Anyone else want to um, to add to this discussion? Seeing none, um, roll call vote. Let's see. I think Mem Council Memar is first. So um, follow Tuesdays. Yes. Council yes. Memar. Yes. Council Nolan. Yes. Council O'Hara. Yes. Council O'Neill? Yes. Council Worthy? Yes. Council Gilman? Yes. The Council Gross, Grow, yes. and Voter are not here. So the yeses have it. Six in I'm favor. Here. Gross is here. Oh, I'm sorry. There's only one absence. <laughs> you made the motion. Oh, shame on me. I said yes when you. <laughs> When you blew past my name. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I should be like bowing to you for making such a good motion. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Seven in favor, um, two absent, uh, Grow and Majota. So um, so the motion passes. And what I will do is um, I will get on the phone um, with Councillor, uh, with um, Senator Tarr as soon as the, this meeting ends and I'll tell him, I'll verbally tell him um what we supported so i think he'll appreciate that and even if this has been resolved by the end of the day today they're still doing the reconciliation between the senate and the house budgets and i think it's helpful for him to know that we're behind him on on this so um in mmi mma well so. Done. um so um the the only other thing that um that council worthy asked to bring up is um the um, ecological restoration, climate nature based solutions and community benefits, Mass Senate Amendment 54, proposed by Senator Tarr, Manchester by the Seas, confronting the challenges of climate change project in the city of Gloucester and the towns of Essex and Rockport, $200,000. Um, do you want to, do you want to? speak to that for a second um council worthy because you are our legislative liaison go ahead so i know it's not on the agenda right at the moment and i'm very cognizant and respectful of open meeting laws um and so what i think we should be doing is if we're all going to write if we all want to write as individuals we just should be clear what we're, what we have it's bill number 54 mm -hmm. the, title, the email as tony mentioned thank you and it is um entitled confronting the challenges of climate change and we'd like they, we're being asked to indicate our support for that amendment so um where valerie can't speak at the moment i'm going to do my best to speak on her behalf but we have the email we have her dialogue on it i think we can look mm -hmm. read it 
network, pull a few points from there, create your own email if you like, mm -hmm. build them a before. I don't think it's appropriate given the advertising to go any further into discussing and debating it. Um, but I think if everyone has what they need, if they want it, um, bill number 54. And I think that it's a good, it's a good exercise for us to go through because whenever we see any type of bills that come forward, we can always make a personal recommendation, but we just have to be clear that we're not speaking on behalf of the city council. And particularly for someone like me as being the president, I have to be even more clear with that because I am not speaking on, on regard to all of you because this was not on the agenda, but you can personally make a decision. Just be clear on that when you do that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, okay. Um, Councilor Gross. And with, without objection, everyone's okay with everyone signing as a city councilor, correct? Right. I mean, without objection, um, I would think that that so everybody's okay with that. And there's also included in that also um, Val Nelson sent um, Greg Verga's letter too. Um, mm -hmm. Surprise that we didn't that we didn't get. But um, anyway, so that's included too to help uh, help out anybody who needs to, you know, paraphrase or or yeah. Uh, Great. Actually, it was I. It was on um, what she sent to us all. There were two it documents. Was, yes, it, it was. I, I was. I know. I was saying. I was surprised that Greg hadn't sent it to us. But oh, I know. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I think going forward. So, so, Council Worthy, I'm glad you brought this up. I think we're all clear on what we can do, and I think going forward, this has been a good, um, a good way to understand how we as a council can influence decisions that are made outside of Gloucester. And we, in your job as legislative um, liaison, Council Worsley, um, the more we can proactively see what's up in front of us and what the Senate and the House are looking at, look at their bills, see what MMA has to say. Um, I have a lot of confidence in MMA just because they represent all of our cities and towns and they have a great base of people that are looking at all these. Um, so I think that we can always have an opportunity of getting together. We can put these matters on our agendas in normal city council meetings if we want to review one and we can do resolutions, we can just do a statement of vote and we can let our state rep and our state senators know how we feel and that will give them that they will feel more empowered to make decisions on our behalf if we're letting them know that we're watching what they're doing and we know that these are important bills so i think this is really important um you know we know that we talk a lot about zoning we talk a lot about ordinances and we have budget responsibilities well this what we did today has a huge budget impact and I'm totally appreciative that that seven members of our council were willing to get together at the short notice, 40 <clears throat> hours in advance. We did everything correctly, um, but um, that that you took the time to be here today because this is important to our budget and to um, the taxpayers in Gloucester. So thank you. I'd is like there any note, else? Note, note that Judith Hoglander is also joined as a as an attendee as well as the other two. So thank you, Judith. That's great. Appreciate it. Val Nelson, Judith Hoglander, and Robert Myers. Thank you. Um, anything else to add before we adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. School, school committee review at five o'clock. Okay, we have to do a quick roll call. We're going to start with Councilor Memard. Yes. Councilor Nolan. We have a great night. Councilor O'Hara. Yes. Council O'Neill? Yes. Council Worthley? Yes. Council Gilman? Yes. Council Gross? <laughs> yes. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Joanne. Thank Good you. Night. We'll see you shortly.